Sapphire Key. This is from 2018. Uh, I found it to be interesting enough where I think it's worth the conversation, but also uh, had some weird enough stuff where I didn't use it for your test. I used it um, for last year's test. So I think it's got some good stuff in it. Uh, we have a wire that has a current that's this direction. And this is I number two, that's wire number two. There's also a, another wire that is above it and it has a current out of the page. And this is current I1. And this distance is D and a equal distant over, over there is where point P is. Whoops, point P. Now they show this from two different vantage points. So this is vantage point number one. And then they show it from another vantage point where, nope. Still wire two, still current in this direction. But there is a, the other wire they're showing it from above. And current is this way. And they're trying to make the, I think the point that, let's see if we can line these up a little bit better. That point P lies in a location that is directly above wire two. They're trying to give us some spatial um, capabilities. Use Ampere's law to derive an expression for the magnitude of the magnetic field at point P due to wire one. Um, I'm not going to do that. At this point, you should be able to derive. Uh, it's just using Ampere's law, and I am hopeful that you know how to do that. But we did it at least once yesterday, so I feel confident that that's what you have. Any question about that? It should be listed as I1, of course, because they're asking about one. Um, they don't ask about direction, but I think direction was, is a valid question. Uh, that would have to be that way for that magnetic field using the right hand rule. Any question about that? All right, good, 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 good. Um, derive an expression for the magnitude of the net magnetic field at point P. Net magnetic field, and it's only the magnitude. Well, perhaps we should take a look at the, uh, the magnetic field produced by current two, which, based on what I'm seeing here, would be, and let's do this in blue, that magnetic field would be out of the board due to current two. Would you guys agree with that? Excellent. And um, let's see. They, they tell me that Current one and current two are related by a factor of two in that current one equals I and current two equals two I. Um, I'm about to be told I'm doing it wrong. It's gotta be into the board. Thanks. The only time you guys pop up is if you can find something I do wrong. Appreciate that a lot. So that's gonna be a magnetic field this way over there in a magnetic field that is upwards there. Um, just to color code it now, I'm gonna get rid of the subscript. The red one is that, and the blue one is that. Right, because the current in the other wire is twice as big as the current as the first, but they are same distance away. Um, it's clear to me that these two magnetic fields are at a right angle to each other, and we want the magnitude. So Pythagorean theorem is all you have to do to figure out the magnitude. So the total magnetic field will be square of the red one plus square of the blue one under the radical. 
They just wanted the magnitude. Um, the magnetic fields are related by a factor of two. We could probably dispense with some of this, but let's at least, for all of you who are completionists, mu naught i over 2 pi d quantity squared plus um, 2 times oops, 2 mu naught i over 2 pi d quantity squared. Um, I think we can factor out mu naught i over 2 pi d. And inside just have 1 squared plus 2 squared. Is that reasonable enough for all of you? So root of 5. So this would be the magnitude of the magnetic field. Great. Um, the angle part, it's kind of funny because I think they're really trying to harp this more than they have to. But let's just turn this to the side. And we have a component of the magnetic field in this direction, I'll say B and a component of the magnetic field in this direction that is 2b. Is that fair enough? So we're trying to figure out the angle this way. So they want calculate the numerical value of the angle to the horizontal for the direction of that magnetic field. Um, I think we're looking for this angle. Is that a reasonable assumption based on what they said? I'm pretty sure because it's the blue one that is the one that is horizontal relative to the way the pictures were drawn on the paper. So I'm just thinking that we're looking at the inverse tangent of one half. And that whatever value you get for that angle has got to be the angle for this. All right, just factor the B out. Fair enough? Yes? Where did you get the inverse tangent from? Like... Um, I'm going to take and put the B value over there. Is that good? And then this is my angle theta. And tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. OK. All right. OK. Why are one, well, I'm sorry, why are one is now released? All right. Which of the following best describes the initial motion of wire one due to the magnetic field of wire two. Assume gravitational effects are negligible. All right, so this is wire one. And I'm just gonna remove some distractions if you guys don't mind. So we can kind of focus on this. So I don't think we need any of this anymore. And I'm afraid that most of that is a distraction anyways. So get all this out of the way. Good. Um, generally, for wire one, there is a magnetic field into the page in the plane that the wire exists in, in the view that we have right here on that side of the wire. And out of the page, in the same plane right here. Is that good? Well, knowing that it's a circular magnetic field, but also knowing that generally, the magnetic field is still gonna be upwards on the bottom or towards us on the bottom and into the page or downwards on the, uh, the top portion of the board, I would use the right-hand rule to look at the interaction between the current and the magnetic field here. When I do that, and I'm using right-hand rule for that, I get on this side of the wire what appears to be a force to the left. So I'm thinking this portion of the wire is getting a force to the left. On the bottom, however, oh wait, uh, force to the right. I can't contort enough. <laughs> there, that way. On the bottom, though, you get a force left. Uh, 
I'm seeing some rotation here. Now it says, which of the following best describe the initial motion of the wire due to the magnetic field of wire two? Assume gravitational effects are negligible. If there's nothing else, then I'm seeing clockwise rotation. So I'm thinking that's what I would check off. Now it says, you know, in figure one, figure two, this is figure two. So I'm thinking clockwise rotation in figure two. Justify your answer? Well, I think uh, some references to right-hand rule in the direction of the force on either side would probably be appropriate. A diagram would probably also be in your best interest. I'd encourage you to have drawn something, but better make sure that whatever diagram you have, you fully reference it with words and don't just say, look at my diagram. You will not get credit if that's all you have. If we go to the official answer sheet, there won't be a picture. There will be words describing the direction of the force acting on the wire on both sides of the wire. So your diagram must be supported by something that you say. Okay? Any question about that? Yes, sir. F-U. F-U, too. Oh. <laughs> F-U were to... And obviously this would be wrong, but from like a test reading point of view... I will note that they tell me how far away this uh, rectangular loop of wire is and how big the rectangular loop of wire is. So I guess if I'm going to be doing any integration, I'm probably going to be adding D plus W. Okay, Oliver? Yeah. So don't ask later. Oh, <laughs> I'm not in any way convinced. So of the following... Select the integration that will give an expression for the flux as a function of time. Um, I encourage you to, in any case like this, you know, come up with a way in which you're going to measure your value for dA. And I will do so by some variable here that I'm going to call dr. And um, this dA will be L D R. Uh, flux is defined as the integral of B dot, B dot DA, the sum of how much magnetic field makes it through there. We've changed the magnetic field to be something that is time variant. This is to satisfy a, a part of the problem that um, I'm pretty sure I left out. Yeah, question F, um, which we have in, is it question F? Oh, yeah. So question F and G, um, we can't do, uh, which I'm pretty sure I said in class, but if not, um, I'm still going to do this portion of it. You have to set up your integration, but you need also an expression for the magnetic field, which is going to include this um, 2 I naught times I minus KT. Now, I don't know that you need to write all these things out, in order to, to pick out the one from the proper list, but I'm doing it mostly because there was some concern about which one of these would be right. Um, this is dA. This is the result of Ampere's law finding the magnetic field around the outside of a wire. And we need to start a distance d away and integrate all the way to d plus w. So um, which of these makes the most sense? Uh, Looks like the bottom left one is the one I would check. Now, they do give you the result of doing that integration, so you don't even get a point for being able to do it, which is too bad. They say mu naught, um, I naught, L times one minus KT, all divided by two pi. Oh no, they must have canceled the two out. And uh, natural log, of d plus w to d. <clears throat> now, um, f is asking for you to find the current in this loop. Um, can't do that yet. We don't have the skill set to do so. But it's not a whole lot. Um, we're going to be learning something called Faraday's Law. And it is the time rate of change of magnetic flux. Now, you don't have to know that for right now. And this is why you couldn't do F or G. But the time rate of change of flux, look at all this. 
The only thing that that actually affects is right there. Everything else is a constant when it comes to what's changing with respect to time. So taking the derivative of a bunch of constants with one thing that's related to T, that should be within your wheelhouse and in the future it will have to be. The hard question, which I'm not going to answer today, is the direction of the current. Now, that's a harder question. And that's one that's going to require advanced use of the right-hand rule. So we'll talk about that as we get closer. But that's the basically F is Maxwell's law. I'm sorry, not Maxwell, Faraday's law. And G is Lenz's law. And we'll have to come back to these. We're not prepared. All right. Anything else?